Hi, I'm Evan of Grover, and this video showcases my Robot Vision project. A shout out to the AU Toronto team for their consistent support. Let's get right into it. Self-driving vehicles have been a sought-after technology for quite some time now. Many big companies like Google, Tesla, Uber, and Nvidia have already invested large sums of money in it. Yet according to the research community, complete autonomous driving is still an unsolved problem. Not something this guy would tell you. If we break down the task of creating an autonomous agent, there are four major tasks to complete in a loop. This project focuses on a specific problem in the task of perception, and how solving that will also help with localization. Autonomous vehicles need to perceive road indicators such as lane and road markings, and these are necessary both for localization and to follow traffic rules. In order to do that, a vehicle is equipped with an array of sensors including cameras, lidars, radars, and GPS. It also has access to maps. Now to perceive those markings, a widely accepted approach is to use GPS position and localize the vehicle onto pre-compiled high definition maps of an area. Since GPS localization is usually accurate to a few centimeters, it is possible to project the map and know a reasonable location of the lane markings as well as the road. Moreover, computationally, this is quite cheap. But a natural question arises, what about the locations where either the GPS or the high definition maps fall short, like country roads or tunnels? Hence, lane and road detection with perception-based sensors is an important problem to solve. For this project, I have focused on road detection and chose to research the use of both LiDAR and camera data. Mainly because the two papers on top of Kitty Road Detection Benchmark follow this approach. I'm using the recently released Audi dataset, which has over 20,000 semantically segmented images along with the LiDAR data. My approach is inspired by the LiDAR Camera Fusion paper by Carl Tegenor et al., which, as mentioned before, ranks quite high on the Kitty Benchmark. Here is an overview of the approach. LiDAR data and the corresponding camera images are used as inputs. A data processing step is performed in order to produce dense LiDAR images. The camera and the LiDAR images are fed into a Fusion FCN that produces an output mask. In order to create an upsampled LiDAR image, the point cloud is first trimmed and then projected onto the image space. As you can see, the LiDAR data is quite sparse. Consequently, a depth completion is performed based on the algorithm created by the researchers at WaveLab. Now, let's talk about the neural network architecture. The backbone neural network architecture is kept the same as that in the paper. It is a standard convolutional encoder-decoder network with a context module for feature extraction. Experiments are done using two fusion methods mentioned in the paper early and late fusion. Experiments are also done to compare the segmentation performance with and without LiDAR data. Here are some images showing the final road masks predicted by the three different approaches. Compared to the ground truth on the top left, late fusion appears to be doing the worst. This plot compares late and early fusion with respect to a metric called intersection over union. It has plotted over 100 epochs of training and tells us that early fusion has been better throughout. If we do a similar comparison for early and no fusion networks, the model without the fusion is doing marginally better, though two plots follow each other quite closely as well. Here is a table comparing the three approaches based on the metrics used by the Kitty benchmark. The three networks were trained with the same source data, same hyperparameters, and for the same number of epochs. Clearly, fusing the LiDAR data is making segmentation harder. An explanation for these results could be that the network hyperparameters weren't appropriately tuned. Keep in mind that the fusion paper did not have any code provided. Moreover, the hyperparameters for LiDAR upsampling were tuned for the Kitty dataset. Another explanation could be the high sparsity of the LiDAR data compared to the Kitty images. Bad LiDAR data could slow down or even derail the network learning. Similarly, 
artifacts in the upsampled LiDAR images could be more deteriorating rather than useful. I would say that it is not clear whether LiDAR data when fused with camera images is useful for the Audi dataset. Independent tuning of the network hyperparameters can give us a better picture. A different upsampling approach or even a different fusion approach can be experimented with. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you.